So in the very first chapter of Dragon Ball, we are introduced to its main protagonist, Son Goku. And as is the case with any good introduction, it's accompanied by what's known as an establishing character moment, which basically works to give the audience a taste of what the character is all about. Good examples of these include the first appearance of Superman on the cover of the now iconic Action Comics number no. 1, wherein he's performing an act of heroism and the first chapter of One Punch Man, featuring Saitama one-shotting a villain with a very bored look on his face. In both instances, we can see that strength is an integral part of both characters. This is no different in Dragon Ball, as we are shown that Goku is not just a happy-go-lucky kid, but also a highly skilled martial artist, and with his initial encounter with Bulma, we are shown that he's not just tough, he straight up has superhuman strength and durability, lifting and throwing Bulma's car and tanking a gunshot to the head. We can see Akira Toriyama telling us that a core part of Goku's character is that he's strong as all hell. But just how strong is he in the very first chapter? Well, let's look at the strength feat a bit closer, as in the Daisenshu it's confirmed by Toriyama that the car Goku lifted is a Renault 5 Turbo, which weighs about 1 ton. Therefore, Goku in his very first display of war strength lifted and threw a 1 ton car. To put that in human terms, the world record for a deadlift is roughly 500 kilograms, half the weight of what Goku handled with a much less impressive feat. So you may be thinking, why did I even bother calculating that? Goku has gone on to become one of the strongest characters in fictional history. Throwing a one-ton car works well as a relatively humble beginning for that aspect of his character. But if only things were that simple, as a few chapters after Goku threw that one ton car, Akira Toriyama decided to put a number next to Goku's strength by having Master Roshi give him a weighted turtle shell to wear in order to increase the effectiveness of his training. And this turtle shell, it came up to a whopping 20 kilograms. About as much as these dumbbells I'm carrying here. Which is just ridiculous, as I myself can just about max out my bench press at 100 kilograms or 225 pounds. But if I were to wear a 2 kilogram backpack in order to increase the effectiveness of my training, that would do absolutely nothing for me. This 20 kilogram weight is especially hilarious, as strength feats just got more intense in Dragon Ball. We have Tao Pai Pai throwing a stone pillar 2,300 kilometers at Mark 7 speeds, about as fast as the world's fastest jet plane. Goku lifts and crushes boulders as a way to warm up in the morning. He judo threw King Piccolo through a building. He smashed a 12 inch thick steel wall in his Uzaru form with just a power level of 100. Power that the Daisenshu describes as matching that of a battleship's main gun. To understand the scope of such power, I recommend you check out the sponsor of today's video, War Thunder. War Thunder is a free-to-play vehicle combat action game available on PC, Xbox and PlayStation. It features over 2,000 tanks, planes, ships and helicopters for you to engage in dynamic combined arms PvP battles. You can customize your vehicle with 3D body pillows and thousands of 2D anime skins made by War Thunder's creative community or create your own. Every vehicle is incredibly detailed and rendered in 4K with incredible graphics. If you want to change from the authentic sounds of your vehicle, you can get anime styled voice packs to listen to paired with War Thunder's amazing soundtrack. As a history nerd, I'm genuinely impressed by the collection of vehicles on offer, spanning over 100 years of technological development. Play War Thunder now for free on PC, PlayStation or Xbox using my link in the pinned comment or video description. This will give you access to the Body Pillow Pack, which contains multiple premium vehicles, a premium account, exclusive body pillows and more. This is available for a limited time only. If you haven't played for at least 6 months, you can also claim the body pillow pack. If you're an active player, my link will give you access to the exclusive Dakimakuras on all platforms. Thank you War Thunder for sponsoring this video. And while wearing a 40 kilogram turtle shell, he pushed a boulder the size of a small house. J <laughs> All that just for much stronger characters to be impressed by Goku turning up to the 23rd Tenkaichi Budokai 
with 20 kilogram shoes and 5 kilogram wristbands. Then a few chapters later, Goku casually judo flipped a giant piccolo and if piccolo only grew 10 times in size, that would make him weigh about 116 tons. But then later on in the series, the gravity training Goku does ranges from 10 to 100 times gravity and this is really just weighted clothes with a sci-fi twist as he goes from weighing 600 kilograms in 10 times gravity to 6 tons in 100 times gravity. Then we have Vegeta training in 300 times gravity making him weigh only 18 tons and finally we have Goku in the Buu saga struggling with 40 tons. As ridiculously low as these numbers seem, it can't be denied that they actually follow a logical progression. You have 20 kilograms to 40 kilograms training with Roshi, 100 kilograms with Goku training for the 23rd Budokai, you have 600 kilograms to 2000 kilograms with Goku training on King Kai's planet, you have 6 tons training in 100 times gravity, you have 18 tons with Vegeta training in 300 times gravity, and finally, you have 40 tons training in the afterlife in the Buu saga. Which I mean, yeah, 40 tons is nothing that I could lift, but when you compare it to, say, Superman bench pressing the weight of the Earth 6 sextillion tons for 5 days straight and Saitama's planetary physical strength feats, it's kind of embarrassing in comparison. Hell, even the street level King Spider Man can handle a few dozen tons himself. So, this begs a very controversial question. Are Dragon Ball characters that strong? Is Goku actually that strong? Well, no shit, of course they are, but it's complicated. Firstly, let me explain away those really low weight numbers, as it's another well-known fictional trope eloquently called, Writers Cannot Do Math. As very often, writers will use numbers that they think sound accurate or impressive rather than numbers that actually, accurately, scientifically portray their world or what their characters are capable of. Take Sagat from Street Fighter. This 7 foot 5 wall of muscle doesn't even weigh 100 kilograms, he only weighs a few more kilograms than I do. And then take this literal whale Pokemon doesn't even weigh half a ton, it weighs 400 kilograms and it's 14 meters tall. As for Dragon Ball's weight numbers, although they do indeed follow a logical progression, they're all useless because they're all derived from the initial 20 kilogram shell, which in of itself completely contradicts a core part of Goku's character as set out in the very first chapter of Dragon Ball, that being he has strength and durability beyond human ability, and a 20 kilogram turtle shell trading completely contradicts that and shouldn't really be paid much attention to. Even Goku trading to a stand 10 Gs, 100 Gs of force and Vegeta going all the way up to 300 Gs, while that may sound impressive, do you know when Dragon Ball characters would actually face an insane amount of G-force? It would be when they fly, as the faster an object accelerates, the more G-force it endures. Take this car for instance, which can go from 0 to about 100 miles per hour in 0.9 seconds. With this, it incurs about 5.4 Gs of force. So just how fast does Goku travel and just how fast does he accelerate? Well, let's be conservative and look at an early speed freak from Goku in the Saiyan Saga when he travelled across the 1 million kilometer snake way in 27 hours, which would give him a speed of 23,000 miles per hour or Mark 30. That's 30 times the speed of sound. And you know what, let's lowball Goku even more as he skipped some of snake way and put his speed at Mark 20. As for how fast Goku accelerates himself, Dragon Ball characters can go from 0 to 100 in speed night instantly. It's how they can catch bullets so easily. But again, let's be stingy and say it takes Goku 0.1 of a second to accelerate to Mark 20. When we do that, the calculations put the amount of G-force Goku withstands just to fly at approximately 
2,500 Gs of force, which would make his body weigh 155 tons. This is what Dragmore characters are doing constantly while fighting. And remember, this is an insane lowball as to how fast Dragmore characters get in the manga. Therefore, if Toriyama's numbers were truly accurate, just flying at those hypersonic speeds would kill Goku, but it doesn't. This trope extends to other anime besides Dragon Ball. A recent example I noticed was in My Hero Academia, wherein All Might wore these weighted wristbands to slow him down and drain his stamina, a handicap for his match against Deku and Bakugo. Well, just how much do they weigh? They're stated to be half All Might's weight, and he weighs in at 254 kilograms obviously in his buff form, which would make the cuffs weigh 127 kilograms. But considering All Might is strong enough to punch with enough force to change the weather, a nuclear bomb level feat, a mere 127 kilograms of added weight shouldn't even be noticeable to him, let alone slow him down. But I get it, when you're a mangaka sleeping two hours a night to meet hellish deadlines, you don't really have time to bust out the old calculator to make sure you give your characters super accurate weight numbers to satisfy versus weirdos on the internet, that's fine. Plus, to an overworked mangaka, lifting a car over your head may sound as crazy as running up and down a mountain wearing a 50 kilogram turtle shell. Plus, these numbers were given more in relation to stamina training rather than overall lifting feats. I think the logic is more so that doing one press up in a hundred G's of force is like doing a hundred press ups all at once, which is interesting and all, but 40 times for my boy Goku, it just ain't cutting it. So let's find out just how strong Goku and the Dragon Ball cast are, but if we're not going to use Toriyama's numbers, what are we going to use? Well, that's simple, as Toriyama is an artist, not a mathematician. So we're going to draw from the feats he draws his characters doing, as when we do that, you soon realize why he ain't beating Goku is pretty much Dragon Ball gospel at this point. You know, with all these crazy strength feats I mentioned in Dragon Ball, like Tao throwing a pillar across a continent, well, the feats in Dragon Ball Z make those look like child play, and it's all because of Dragon Ball's key based power system. Considering that key is the same source of power that lets Dragon Ball characters blow up entire celestial bodies, it's no surprise it's what allows their bodies to transcend physical human limitations, as Toriyama clarified in Dragon Ball's super exciting guide. You can only train your muscles to a certain point. It's key that carries you beyond that and what helped Goku come closer to being the strongest warrior in the universe. Even in battle, it's shown that characters can amplify their physical attacks with Ki to the extent that it literally surges out of their fists. As for Ki Blast themselves, they carry planet destroying amounts of force and also carry this amount of force in beam form just with its raw kinetic energy. Look at how the Kamehameha Goku fired against Vegeta almost knocked him off his feet. That's how much force these beams are carrying. With that aside, let's get into some Dragon Ball Z feats. Firstly, there's Gohan obliterating a Saiyan space pod. This may not appear too impressive at first glance. That is until you realize just how durable these pods are. They can survive atmospheric re-entry, tear through buildings, leave massive craters, and tank being at ground zero of continent-sized explosions all without a scratch. And Gohan's headbutt also cracked Raditz's armor, the same armor that endured this key blast from Piccolo, the same key blast that can vaporize an entire moon. So, one issue I have with this whole planet level, moon level thing is that people throw around these words, but it doesn't really capture the magnitude of power we're talking here. So, let me try to give you a point of reference here. So, let's go for the Tsar bomb to compare. This is the most powerful nuclear device ever created. They carry the force of a whopping 57 megatons of TNT, enough to wipe out a large city from the face of the earth. So to blow up the moon, you would need 500 billion Tsar bombs just to blow up the moon. 
which pales in comparison to the amount you'd need to destroy a planet. And Trunks cut Freezer to pieces, a being that endured an explosion of this unimaginable magnitude. He cut him to pieces, a being harder to destroy than an entire planet. This aspect of Key Blast is very apparent in the Namek Saga. When Goku had to use his physical strength to overpower a Key Blast from Frieza as it pushed him through a mountainside. On the note of Frieza, do you remember when he casually mentioned that surviving a planetary explosion would just be an inconvenience for him? Remember when Vegeta got so pissed off at the fact that he wasn't a Super Saiyan that he almost blew up Namek, but Frieza in a strange act of… heroism? <laughs> Simply leapt in the air and kicked it away. Then when fighting Goku, he overpowered Goku's Kaioken x20 Kamehameha single-handedly. He then temporarily resisted a spirit bomb with planet-crushing force with his physical strength. But despite all of those feats, Super Saiyan Goku was beating the shit out of him with just his punches. And on the note of Goku, he even straight up states that he is harder to destroy than a planet as the casually planet busting Frieza couldn't even hurt him. And as for Frieza's claim to be able to survive a planetary explosion, you probably already know that he indeed ended up putting his money where his mouth is. As in a rather extreme example of poetic justice, the tyrant was the only person to be caught in the explosion of planet Namek while cut in half on Death's door and pushed into the planet itself by Goku's Key Blast. Now despite the physical strength of Dragon Ball characters clearly being above planet level and potency, here's where certain detractors would try and argue, why don't their punches destroy the planet? Well for obvious reasons really, how can Akira Toriyama display martial arts choreography with 20 quadrillion nuclear level explosions going on in the background? It's the same reason why not every serious punch Superman throws or punch that hurts Superman doesn't destroy the planet as well. It's the same reason why key blasts thrown by characters much stronger than Saiyan Saga Piccolo don't blow up the planet, it's for plot convenience. And then plus, Dragon Ball characters do have key control and can condense the key blasts to create higher damage in smaller areas. Some people also try to downplay Dragon Ball character strength by arguing that key blasts only carry planet destroying levels of force when they explode. Even though in the Buu saga we see Buu Han deflect a key blast that then tears through the entire planet. We see Vegeta's key blast tear through an entire city without exploding. And even if we stick to just exploding key blast, Raditz caught Goku's Kamehameha, which was way more powerful than Piccolo's moon destroying key blast. Frieza did a similar thing to Goku's way beyond just planet level Kaioken Kamehameha. And in Battle of Gods, Goku catches and pushes against the force of his own Kamehameha as a way to do physical training. Then there are key blasts which are designed to punch through the opponent rather than explode, like Piccolo's special beam cannon which is leagues more potent than his moon vaporizing key blast. And just for good measure, with the last key blast of the manga, Kid Buu almost overpowered a spirit bomb with his physical strength. Now this spirit bomb had enough power to vaporize Kid Buu, a being that could regenerate from planetary explosions with zero effort. So yeah, Dragon Ball characters are clearly crazy strong and this strength gets even crazier as we enter the Dragon Ball Super era of the franchise. We have stuff like Goku becoming a universal threat, we have stuff like Vegeta struggling to deadlift a thousand tons. No, no. We have characters like Jiren attaining strength that surpasses space and time and we have Goku getting scratched by a bullet? Oh Dragon Ball Super, you're gonna need your own video, won't you? Remember to check out War Thunder using the link in my description or pinned comment to gain access to the exclusive body pillow pack which contains multiple premium vehicles, a premium account, exclusive body pillows and more. 
But before I torture myself making that video, have you ever wondered among the Dragon Ball Super cast, who does Akira Toriyama deem the strongest and weakest characters to be? Well, if you want to know why Gogeta clapping Beerus is 100% canon, click this video over here to get my take on a canon Dragon Ball Super power scale tier list. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching, like and subscribe if you enjoyed and stay locked into the cage. Peace out.